This short video is showing one of the new painter brush packs, and this one is called Perfect Pets. It's got 15 different brushes in it that are good for adding animal hair, fur, painting uh, things that could be part of animals. And in this little video, just going to show what each brush stroke is. Start at the top here with animal skin, and this is rather wild texturing brush. In this larger size, you can build up some very interesting textures to use as background skin, hide, anything like that that you think you might need a random but still kind of open texture feel for. This is a great brush to use. The next brush is blended fur, and we'll leave this current texture on here. Blended fur does this kind of rough, a little bit blended look, but it also works and picks up a lot of the underlying color so that you are actually blending and not just putting down these kind of random furry shapes. It's a nice brush to go over already completed sections of what you may be painting and uh, give it a good try. It, it will take some getting used to because the blending is rather subtle. The next brush is Cowlick. Calic really paints just what it says. You know that messy hair where you can't get the comb to make it lay down? Well, this would be a calic on some sort of animal. Just scribbling it here, I could see doing some kind of little guinea pig or something with it. Fun brush. It's quite random, fairly unorganized. The bristles it paints very nicely. I think you can do a lot with this brush, and if nothing else, it is really fun to play with. I would use it toward the end of a project where you're adding some little details, probably not to start a project, but you can see you can get some pretty nice effects with it. The next brush is Crinkle Fur, and this one may be my favorite brush in the whole pack. It paints this fur perpendicular to the stroke. And the fur varies wildly. As you can see, some of it is small, some of it is thick. It's of a random length. A nice brush to simply build up some rough kind of fur on an animal. I could see easily painting a buffalo. So that is crinkle fur. Dirty fur is the next brush. And it is a brush that is a little bit similar to blended fur although the little fur pieces are shorter, and it doesn't blend as much. This brush, well, it doesn't really blend at all. This brush simply puts down these real short little fur pieces, kind of like Animal with Dirty Fur would have. The next brush is Fin, and this would be a good brush painting fish fins, hence its name Fin. So there's really no right or wrong way to use any of these brushes. These are just kind of some display of how the strokes work to give you some ideas of what you might want to do with them. But there is no right or wrong way to use them. The next brush is Fine Fur. I think this is a quite nice brush because the fur it paints is really thin, really fine, and really random. Good brush, not only for fur, but I could see this being used for a lot of natural kind of objects, weeds, grass, things that kind of need this random look and feel to them. You can paint a hayfield as well as painting a perfect pet. It is a little bit ironic to me that the name of the brushes are perfect pets when really the brushes themselves are more for creating <laughs> Very imperfect pets. Fish Doodle, it's a little bit similar to Finn in that it's really kind of a sketching brush. Kind of a little bit wacky one. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. And it just feels like it should be used for sketching fish. So, hence the name on this one, Fish Sketch. Fun brush. Try it out. It, it's really quite useful. You can size it, of course, and the smaller the size, a little bit more control you'll have over the effect. It's a great brush. So that is Fish Doodle.
The next is Hedgehog. And I think this one could have been called Hedgehog or Porcupine because it makes these really kind of spiky, thick hairs. You would find them on hedgehogs or porcupines, and you can, of course, layer them. They're nice because top and bottom, they are very spiky, but then as you get toward the edges, they thin out and become quite a bit thinner. A little more random, but they are thinner, so you can build multiple layers, giving great depth to whatever kind of creature you want to use these on. The next is mangy. And this pretty much is what it sounds like. Great for painting some mangy hair of a creature. Very random. Works with flow maps to make chap skin. Just throwing out some ideas. Because, again, it, you really are limited only by the imagination uh, that you use, that you have when you start painting with them. So most of these brushes are very imaginative. Most of them are probably best used as you start to finish an image, layering them in different ways. They can produce some really, really interesting results. The next is Poodle, and it's pretty much just what it sounds like. I was thinking, wow, that kind of looks like a fur ball. That kind of looks like maybe a Poodle. So, hence Poodle, or maybe a mouse that we all know and love. Uh, it's really up to you, and that's that begins the case with a lot of these brushes. It's kind of what you want to do with them that's going to make them work. So that is Poodle. The next brush is Sheepdog. This one is kind of similar to Calic, but a little bit more controlled. It still has that kind of crazy brush feel, but the little bristles on it are thinner. They're not quite as wacky when you paint with them. They just work kind of nicely. You could paint a sheepdog with them. You could paint really pretty much anything you might want. Okay, even I can see as I'm sitting here doodling these strokes to show you, you could maybe even paint a lion with them. So this is sheepdog, a nice brush. Give it a try. Tail, this is pretty much what it sounds like. You need to paint a tail good brush to do it. If you go slow, you have a lot more control over the curve. If you go fast, it spreads out and becomes a little bit more random. Neither is right nor wrong. It's just a different way the brush behaves. You could paint whiskers with it. You could paint anything. You could paint bug antenna. All sorts of things you can do with these brushes. When you're in the middle of working, think about it and give one of them a try. The next one is trimmed fur. So this would be for a perfect pet. Let me make that a bit smaller. For a perfect pet that you've just taken to the groomer and now their fur is all nice and trim. If you paint really quick with it, you get some random displacement of the bristles. If you paint slower, each individual little hair bristle is closer together, not quite as random. The brush does run perpendicular to the stroke you make with your stylus. So that is trimmed fur. And the last is turtle. And this is probably the quirkiest brush of the bunch. If you just draw with it, it looks kind of like just some old random brush. But if you will set and spin your stroke, you can build these kind of scaly looking things that you might find on a turtle shell. And that was actually the inspiration for the name. The brush came first in this case, not the idea. The brush came first. So it's the old chicken and the egg thing in this case. It takes a little bit of practice to get some good spinning circles, particles going. A little bit of practice doesn't hurt and you can get some really interesting looking strokes with it. So anyway, those are the perfect pets brushes for Painter 2020 and some earlier versions. You should get them, give them a try, enjoy them, be creative. They should make it so you can produce some really nice art. Mm -hmm.